What's up, Nubians? Welcome to Tech Nubians, part of the Geekish Network. This is your weekly deep dive into video games steeped in blackness. We're a little bit deeper than video games. We cover everything technology and entertainment. So I'm your host with the most, Charles. You can call me Chuck. With me, we have our concept artist extraordinaire, Ryan. Our super producer, Leon, or super technical producer, Leon. What's up, people? And we have Travis. Y'all know Travis. The old head in the video game industry. I just messed with you. I just messed with you. Just mess with you. First of all, yo, what up? Second <laughs> of all, if Leon's like the super producer, then what am I like? Okay. The no. super duper producer. Oh. How about that? Does that make you feel? Mm. <laughs> Guess what, guys? We have a special guest today. Mm, um, the word. Yeah, we do. We have Joe Aguilar since we're in Tresse week. Nice. He's our director for the new animated series, Tresse. So I'm pretty sure him and Ryan have a lot to call, talk about. Probably. And whatnot. And we, we probably have a lot of questions for him because we're in yeah. video games and he does animation. So it's something we could talk about. Dare uh, I say mm -hmm. it was binge worthy. Yes, it was binge worthy. You watch our show? You watch the show? The whole damn thing, sir? Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did you watch Did you watch binge worthy, the, t the, the podcast? I did not this week. Oh yeah, you should go back and watch it. We said it was. I was busy. I, look, I was. I, I, I was. I was. I, I was busy binging. I get it. I get it. For and, those you know, in the I've, chat, I've got a uh, shameless I've, plug. I've got, I've got so many questions. Yeah, For those in the chat, I got a shameless plug. Go watch Binge Worthy. We even had a special guest from the. Uh, uh, we had Carl from the Philippines, and he specializes in mythological creatures from the Philippines. Oh, that's dope. So we had a really good conversation with him. Um. I guess we're going to talk today because today is a national holiday. Finally. Did y'all know that? It, it, yeah. it, was kind of, it, it was kind of hard to ignore, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they made a national holiday day before yesterday, and it's a holiday today. <laughs> I mean, that, it's funny it, how that thing, that's how the that, fastest this ever happened. You know, as far as like from, from like, hey, let's really make this happen to let's make this happen, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, I, I don't want to minimize, like, the struggle to actually get it there. Yeah. yeah you know what been, I'm saying? But it, it, but it seems like it, it, it seems like it just popped up and, and Biden was sort of like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll aim in that. Um, uh, I wish but, he but there's this fast for police violence against black people. Yeah, there's there's a little there's a little more to that. that? <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a little more to that. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, I I know that I wrote uh, mm -hmm. on my social media, you know, about Juneteenth, and immediately Leon said, "Well, you know, I'm worried how many people got got the day off." <laughs> so, well, yeah, how, how many people that oppose it get the day off? How yeah, many? You know, we we've got schools basically saying, "Well, hey." You got this holiday, but we're not allowed to actually teach you why we have this holiday. That part too. Yeah. That part too. Yeah. I guess it's, I guess it's up to the parents, you know, to do that. Because <laughs> me, for one, I, I don't hold back with my kids. I let them. I give it all. I'm like, hey, this is what happened. This is how they did it. They've been telling us this story. And that's not true. And this is what really happened. And that's yeah. what, how but, I got my kids. Right. But what's sad about that, Ryan, is most of us don't know what really happened, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't learn I didn't learn about Black Wall Street until I got to college. Mm. How many Black History Month? This this is why I, I personally have issues with Black History Month because it's become this safe. Let's just talk about Martin Luther King, just the good parts of Martin Luther King. Yep. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll just talk about peaceful nonviolence and we're just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. cover some marches and the March of Washington. And we're going to yep. leave all that lynching and raping and destruction and murder and killing and all that stuff. We're not going to talk about that. So we don't hear about Black Wall Street. We don't hear about children that are that are executed on the electric chair and have to sit on their Bible so that their head hits the cap. And or then, you know, debate. 50 years <laughs> later, we're sorry. We don't, we don't hear about people saying, oh, I think this, I think this black man, this black child raped me uh, or whistled at me. So let's go send out a, a crew to go kill him. Right. We don't talk about any of that stuff. Yep. And, uh, and, and, you know, those of us that get to college, we take a black history studies class or we do some research on our own. We learn about that. So now there is a movement to learn more, but but we don't even know our own history. Nope. Which mm. is which is which is yeah. really how can we teach our kids with when we don't know? 
Y'all you know what's so crazy? So my one of my college professors at Morehouse, he's actually a PhD. He, worked, he taught at Morris Brown. His PhD is black torture devices. Like mm. he actually did a whole study wow. on it. America, the reason Britain has a shortage of medieval torture devices, because a lot of uh, American landowners and wealthy people in the South bought most of them. There were more medieval torture devices in America than there are in Europe. Makes sense. They used to buy them all, and the the Union soldiers destroyed them, and the black slaves destroyed them. But they had the bird cages, the the, the Iron Maidens. They had all that here. It makes sense. Like, yeah, let's bring you're, it over. You're you're terror you're terrorizing and subjugating a population that is larger than you are, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. you, need, you need to have tools in place to do that because mm-hmm. if they all just woke up one day and said, "Hey, let's just get knives and just deal with this problem ourselves." Yes then the South would be a lot different than it is today. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, I, think a, I think an issue or a, not necessarily an issue, but a situation that we find ourselves in uh, now, uh, a little different from, you know, historically is how widely information is free, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, how easy it is to, to, to get to information. And really the question now is, the fidelity and the quality of the information that we get, mm-hmm. right? Um, and uh, because it's 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 hard to hide now. It's you know we're 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 truly in the information age, and it's hard to hide some of that stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so now that now that Tulsa and all the other different sort of racial uh, massacres that have you know that have happened over the years are, are, are bubbling up to the surface, I just want to make sure that we protect that information. Yep. That, you know that 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 information is 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 disseminated in a way that's you know irrefutable, right? right. And we're we're getting there, but it's 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 always been a struggle, and it'll always be one. Travis, I think I think you're really kind of dialing in on something that's really important in the information age. It used to be that the knowledge, you know, kind of pre-literacy, right? Knowledge was was controlled by the clergy. The clergy decided mm-hmm. the stories or the religious leaders, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever they were called at the time, right? They mm-hmm. decided the stories that were taught. Uh, and then over time that grew and then we got the printing press, right? The printing press was amazing because now we had the ability for more people to disseminate ideas, but there was still cost to that, right? Like that was still controlled by an editor and you didn't have money to get a book printed. Now to the information age, anyone can have a voice and, mm-hmm. and it is impossible to contain information, but now we have lost whatever filters that we had. So you're right. It is now impossible for us to stop the flow of the truth, but it also makes it easy for QAnon people to spout Jewish space lasers or other garbage, right? We have no control over that. Uh, And it can, it can go just as viral, like stupid people unite. Uh, It's, 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 it's all the context, right? It's, 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 it's all context. Like, for example, I remember um, having this debate actually in the Dungeons and Dragons game uh, that I had about uh, explosive rooms, right? Uh, and, and, And people were like, well, how do they know that I'm, uh, how, did, how did the rooms know that I'm reading them? And I said, you know that reading out loud is a recent thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's why when people used to go into uh, monasteries and churches and they used to hear all this mummering, it's only because the clergy knew how to read, right? And yeah. so they were actually reading. That's what they were doing, right? Um, and I think that... Um, yeah, so the clergy did control uh, a, a lot of the information, and and at this point, and I guess I'm seeing like a need from from a technological standpoint, right? Like, how do we preserve that information? You know, how do yeah. we, you know, because I think that's the that's the biggest war now in the information age is is actually verifying that information and making sure that information is 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 accurate. Uh, and easily accessible, right? Because, yeah. yeah, because anybody can write anything nowadays, right? So how do you know it's true is yeah. really the question. Yeah. And, and this is even worse on top of that is how do you actually not get frustrated with all the information and get in the flow state? Because I, t- we I was discussing this this morning, it's just like having a puzzle and you're solving a puzzle and you have all the pieces on the on the t- table and somebody comes with another puzzle that's identical, but the pieces are cut differently and they dump it on top of that puzzle <laughs> as you're working on it. <laughs> then somebody else comes and dumps another puzzle. Yeah. And that's what all this information is right now. Right. Uh, it, it's it, it all is, the same it's, puzzle, it's, but you have to put all the pieces in together. Then you realize some puzzles had just missing pieces. Yeah. 
I mean, it's 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 hard. I mean, you know, now you're getting to in, into the situation, like you said, where you can, you know, your information can be so clouded and and, and be so muddled that you it's it's hard to discern fact from fiction, right? And you know, it, it, we're really just uh, describing it, it, at least in my mind, how technology can be used to do more than just give you that information, right? Like, how can it be used to verify this information? How can yes. it, you know, how can it be used to help you ask the right questions? Because sometimes, you know, the questions that you ask sometimes are just fundamentally incorrect, right? Um, because they're based on bad information, you know? And anybody, anybody who's made games, who's had to sit next to a data analyst and ask like, why does this game suck? Or, 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 or why are people not playing? Uh, know that it's all in the questions that you're asking sometimes. Yeah. It's, not your, it, it's not just a, a simple problem. But, but I, think, I think that builds upon that, what builds upon that though is that we have lost whatever respect we had for science, uh, I think collectively as a culture, because a scientist will tell you like, look, if you want to look at say Newtonian me mechanics, right? Like, you mm -hmm. know, the, the apple falling from the thing and, and it's, it's an approximation, right? It's, it's an approximation of physics. On the gross sense, it's correct. But when you get down to the nitty gritty to the particle level, oh, it doesn't hold up, right? Then we have to look at quantum physics, right? So, mm -hmm. so a scientist will understand, well, yes, on the macro level, Newtonian physics is fine. Right. But if you want to get down to the subatomic level, you have to go to quantum physics. It doesn't invalidate one. It's just a, an incomplete view of that. Right. Someone who just learned it in mm -hmm. science understands these things. Mm -hmm. But then you get people like that's why you get the flat earthers. Right. They find like one little thought that they think is correct w without any context. And they're like, this proves that the world is flat. And it's just like, yeah, I wish I could push you off that flat earth. Um, <laughs> yes, that Technubians is anti-flat earther. I'm making that statement right now. Uh, so, so we we've lost we've lost the respect of our our people that are that are truly who spend their lives researching these things, and we think that Billy, who's tweeting from inside a Texaco gas station, is the equal of that person. He's not, right? And yeah. yeah that's, well. Are, are we giving are we giving ignorance more of a platform though, right? Are, are, are we giving are, you know, well? I well, what I mean by that is 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 that you know, do we take that too far, right? Like, because it's easy to be it's easy to be ignorant, right? It really is, right? And it's harder it's 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 harder to actually research the things that you actually are debating or, or whatever, right? But what I'm saying is 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 that um, do we give these do we give these people who just spout out nonsense like uh, statistics or, you know, or I, I, I take it even further than that. I'm sorry. I said, I take it even further than that. We celebrate these people. We're in the age of celebrating mediocrity. We celebrate mediocrity. The Kardashian family became billionaires because they're a mediocre family that made it. And people celebrate that. Most of the girls that follow the Kardashians saying, I could actually be one of those because they don't have talent and did it. I could do that. I'm questioning whether or not that's a modern thing. I think it is. I don't think. I don't is think it? it is. I think. I, I don't think it is. Look, we. I don't think we it are, is. I don't think it is. Well, because and, and and I'm maybe telling a little bit on myself, but sometimes when I watch reality television, mm -hmm. I revel in the fact that I'm a lot smarter than these people on TV, right? <laughs> and so that could yeah. be a portion of of, of that popularity but, is you actually feeling good about yourself because these people are just yeah ignorant. Look, look, yeah, we, well, there's a thing all, called TV smart, too. There's always been a saying in Hollywood, TV smart. Keep it TV smart. Tra Travis, I agree with you that it's not new, right? All of us could tell a story about some experience by our non-popular interests growing up <laughs> that resulted in us being bullied, physically attacked, or, you know, just generally socially ostracized through our childhood, mm -hmm. right? All of us have this story, right? I'll bet real money, uh, you know, I, I, I dealt with real violence, you know, yeah. with, with kids with kids beating me up. And that's how I learned to fight, to defend myself. You know, a, a book bag full of books makes a great weapon. And then, you know, <laughs> like Andrew like Wigan beat it up enough, you win all the fights, right? So, so there you go. So I, I, He's I like, built this, this right arm is strong. Right. I was so, almost but, a baseball champion. But the bottom line is, so, so you're right. That's never changed, right? Anyone who's been intellectual or on the beaten path, growing up in public schools in Cleveland, you couldn't sing a tune or dribble a basketball, you know, who cared, 
right? So, so I agree. I think I think the internet is an accelerant for for something that has been out there before. And I also think it's it's a way for I think a lot of these people that were really kind of cuckoo, they were in kind of relative social isolation, right? It's like, oh, that's just crazy Bob. He's in his house doing whatever. Now crazy Bob's got internet, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Ahead, what, ahead, yeah, what, what, what I want to know is what was your you guys uh, wake up moment, the moment when you guys you know through, when you were growing up and you were hearing a ton of stories throughout your life. And then suddenly this one story just woke you up and say, wait a minute, something don't sound right. What, what have I been learning from the time, you know, from, from the time I've been born from school and everything. For me, it was uh um the lone ranger when i heard that the lone ranger was originally the story was a black dude mm -hmm. when i heard that that's what to me that was a wake up moment because i used to watch the tv show thinking you know here's this guy on the white guy on the horse and with tonto and doing all this stuff and i was all into that and i'm like this is great and then that made me start thinking about tarzan and i'm like really hmm, what's what's up with that story and other, hmm. you know, a couple other things this was me as a as a creator, as a as a guy who's who works in industry that actually develops stories, and you know, so when I hear these things, it makes me think about that stuff. You know, oddly enough, oddly enough, mine came uh, sort of sort of the same way, um, in that uh, I, I I heard that uh, cowboy was actually uh, a, a term that they called black men, um, you know, um, because white men were called frontiersmen. Mm -hmm. mm. And 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 mm -hmm. you know and, and and black men were called cowboys, boy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, boys. And 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 so I was like, wow, I I didn't even know that was a slur. And now people wear it like a badge of honor. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's amazing what language does over the years, right? Yeah. For, for me, it's when I made the cognitive connection between the Confederate bat battle flag and the Dukes of Hazard, which which oh. as a kid. I love that show, right? They were they were fighting the law and mm -hmm. jumping over stuff, everything. And then I'm just sitting here and I'm like, well, well, wait a minute. They're they're celebrating racist people who want to enslave and murder people that look like me. Why am I watching mm -hmm. the show? My parents, why are y'all letting me watch this show? <laughs> 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 and 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 that kind of made me question things, right? And and things that we think that are okay um, that now aren't, right? Because mm -hmm. because we, we we have a different perspective on it. Mm -hmm. So we better off? Yes That's and no. A, yeah, well, no, no. Well, I, maybe. I, 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 see, to me, to me, I think we are, you know, um, and, you know, this, you know, our, our our path to equality, you know, is a game of inches. It really is. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's 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 sad that it has to be that way, but it but it is. Um, and so for me, you know, I I, I take a look at you know the situation or, or you know during my during my uh, my parents' uh, time versus my time. And I ask, have we moved the needle? And I, I and and I think that we absolutely have, um, but it's it's not where it should be, and 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 so I think that, and and I'm not saying this is a reason to step off the gas. As a matter of fact, I'm saying exact opposite. This is a reason to, you know, step on the gas. Is because if 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 we've gotten this far, we might as well keep going. Uh, Travis, I think you're right, and this is the conversation that my family has a lot. Right, you cannot objectively say things are worse given that lynch mobs freely walking down the street is somewhat frowned upon today, right? Versus versus the default way yeah. of, of kind of dealing with issues. So when you when you just when you look at that data from that perspective, it's not to say that other things aren't bad or things haven't changed in other mm -hmm. dimensions. Right now now racism is quiet. The person the person knows he can't be racist at work, but he'll just pass you over for that promotion. Right, like there's there's other ways which are which are more insidious and harder for us to get at. And I think you're right. I think I think we gain some, and then we lose a little bit, and we gain some. But but I think to say that the needle uh, hasn't moved forward in the past four or five six decades is disingenuous. Right? It's just it's just not true in the data. That's yeah. Right. 
Yeah. And I think, I think that, you know, and, and, and honestly, I think that has a lot to do, you know, um, and I'm sure we can get into a little bit more of this when we have a guest here, but mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, a lot of that has to do with um, media, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it has to do with, uh, it, it has to do with representation. It mm-hmm. has to do with the fact that, you know, now, um, because we can serve our product up directly to the consumer, right? I mean, there's almost... You almost don't have to have any middleman now in between you and your in, in your consumer, right? And we've got so many different consumers nowadays mm-hmm. who look like us, who think like us, who 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 listen to the same music, who like the same things. Um, mm-hmm. That that we can we can start uh, we can start monetizing that in a way, and big business sees it, right? They definitely see it, mm-hmm. and uh, in any business that is big, can't afford not to capitalize on, on, on minority, uh, you know, business now, because yes. even, even a minority business is quite huge. I mean, yes. re- remember when we were in, uh, uh, the con in, in California, um, not Comic-Con. WonderCon, WonderCon, we were at WonderCon and we talked about this, right? This was right after Black Panther had, had released when they said, Oh, yes. no, Never nobody's going to pay to see a movie led by black people you know, almost exclusively stabbing black. black people. And it was just like, well, and then you had Crazy Rich Asians shortly after that. So mm-hmm. so this this challenge of that is like, hey, not only do you have this audience out there that is that is uh, a potentially profitable, they are literally starved for content, right? Yes, and, and, and yes. Even, and it's not in that audience. The greater audience is even starved for this type of content. Yeah, yeah. can, can I know? tell you though, like in, you know, I, I should probably, I, I'll just make this comment, but then I'll. Yeah, I'll wait for to bring in the guest, you guys. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, after watching Tressa and, and, and actually seeing like the behind the scenes footage and, you know, the creators, I got emotional because how they were feeling is exactly how I felt after leaving Black Panther. Yes. Like, like God damn it, finally. Mm-hmm. Right, finally, mm-hmm. and there's nothing like being seen like that. Nothing, nothing, nothing like, like it. it nothing right, like it. because what it does is is it makes you look to your left and look to your right at 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 your people that you thought you were weird. You thought that you were like mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? And so, like when when me and Leon first met, like I said, you know, when they said our producer Leon will be here, I said I just know he black. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever really seen a white Leon, no. right? Um, but, you know, it, it was like instantly, like I hadn't said a word to Leon, right? And mm-hmm. I know he read comics. I know he was technical. I knew he liked video games. Mm-hmm. I knew that, you know, we could be separated at birth because, mm-hmm. you know, because we were that odd peg in, 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 in this, in this equation. Right. And Mm -hmm. so when you see people come together and build something unique that speaks to, speaks to them culturally, Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Like there is nothing like it. And I, and I felt that energy and it was, you know, I was emotional about it because I was like, I know exactly how you feel. Let me tell you all the guests that we've had in the network this week, you could feel it in them like yes we we have arrived we cannot let this stop and i was like nah, i remember but, having that for the first time yes sir I was like, on yes. congratulations you know? when i said we're gonna fight for you all too because this is a multi-front war that we're yeah, all if you think we don't feel it you don't <laughs> yeah. think we feel it yeah. like we feel it yeah yeah with that said let's bring in jojo the art director for tresse all right you know the wizard behind the, the wall, could you please bring him in? Yeah. Joe, hey, Joe, Joe. Joe, Joe. How you doing? How you doing, Joe, Joe? <laughs> Welcome to Tech Nubians, Joe, Joe. We're so happy to have you here. And let me first tell you, your room looks dope. Oh, my God. I'm about to, t- I'm about to turn mine Thank down you. right now. I'm about Thank to tear all this down right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I love all that. I collect Transformers, too. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Uh, Jojo, could you tell everybody uh, on the panel and also everybody in the chat who you are and where you came from? Like, where was your humble beginnings? Um, Charles, uh, my name's Jojo Aguilar. I uh, work in animation. 
-hmm. And um, I've been doing that for a long time. And uh, right now I'm a art director and a production designer on a couple shows uh, mm -hmm. for Netflix. And, um, you know, started like 30 years ago um, doing a character cleanup at Hanna-Barbera um, right out of high school. And um, it was a it was a rough job coming out of high school and, you know, seeing all my friends go to college and have fun. And, uh, you know, I was stuck in a room cleaning up, you know, other people's work. And, you know, I kind of got, uh, um, you know, not so uh, passionate about the industry. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, shortly after I left and then, you know, tried everything else, all kinds of jobs, including going to college and, you know, never feeling like, you know, it was like something I wanted to be doing. So then I, I kind of happened back into animation. And then I was like put in with uh, a lot of young people and um, it was just like, it, it just felt like, you know, that's the place where I wanted to be. And so, you know, that's, that's when I decided, yes, this is where I want to be. And this is what I want to continue doing, doing art. Okay. Okay. And so John and to the rest of the, the, the host on the show, we have Travis. He's the one to Tresse behind this background. We have Leon in the Michigan, a shirt, and we have Ryan in Juneteenth. Hey, you and Ryan are somewhat similar. Y'all both similar. are art directors. Yeah, you know, I, I've been looking at your bios. It's like it's very similar. Everything you guys do, it's it's almost the same. Like all mm -hmm. that world building and. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when did you realize animation was your path? It, you obviously at high school, you're like, I'm going to do animation. When when was the first time you realized? And what did your parents say to you when you oh. said you want to be an animator? Okay, well, you know, in you know, I was always drawing and mm -hmm. uh, actually the first time I remember, you know, like I, I'd always draw things, you know, like mm -hmm. um, on my sketch uh, notebook. But then, you know, I started getting into comics and then mm. I started, you know, emulating the big artists. And, and then I said, oh, my God, you know, this is, you know, I felt proud of my work. So, you know, in high school, I was doing all the um, art, you know, um, clubs and stuff like that and then it's just like yeah I can't I wasn't really good at anything else you know I was very bad at grades and mm -hmm. you know all the other things just didn't fit with me so mm -hmm. that's that, that's when I decided I had to go that route okay so, so Travis I think just like your story of you and I I think Ryan and Jojo are the same person too uh, absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. we all have the same stories man you know it's like you know you get in school and you're just like oh so <laughs> yeah 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 give me an example of uh like what one of the, the your hurdles that you had to go through trying to get into the industry um you know i was very lucky you know my godmother and there was a small community in uh um in the animation uh industry where there's like filipinos who all know each other and my godmother got me an interview with uh, other Filipinos at uh, Hanna-Barbera at that time. And, um, you know, it, it just kind of just happened quite easily and uh, with luck. But then when I left and kind of wanted to come back in, it was like, I didn't know anybody. But then, you know, I joined a comics group called uh, Black Velvet Studios with Eric Canetti and okay. Byron um. Panoranda, all these, and th most of them in it, Axel was there, most of them in it were Filipino. And, um, you know, I, I had uh, started a, a, a clothing company that uh, promoted Filipino pride. And I, I did a lot, all the artwork mm -hmm. and stuff like that for the t-shirts. And then uh, this small comics group came up to me and said, hey, can we uh, sell our ash cans on, at your booth? And I said, yes, why not? And then, you know, just hanging out with them talking about comics and uh, Mikey Macasero, um, he was part of that group. And he also joined my, my group at uh, uh, Bolo Sportswear. And we, we kind of meshed all together. And before long, I was like, you know, I don't want to do t-shirts and uh, clothing. This is not my path. And my partner at the time wanted to be a Navy SEAL. So he said, 
okay, let's just do what we want to do. We went back and I started, you know, just hanging out in uh, Gennard Soriano's garage doing uh, comics. And um, eventually Gennard got um, uh, a, a test at Sony Animation for, um, for uh, uh, a show called Extreme Ghostbusters. And he asked me to take it too, and I did, and we both got in. And that's, that's when, we, when I got back into animation. But the real hurdles was finding out, you know, this is what I wanted to do. And I had, I had done so many different jobs and failed miserably. You know, like one company, I was an executive assistant, and I think I lost in one day twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> wow! <laughs> they found me passed out, you know, in the bathroom because I had taken a uh, Valium just because I was so nervous. And the the boss, who I still love today, uh, Mr. Sackmer, said. This is not the job for you. <laughs> you, know, you. Please go and do do what you want to do. And I know it's art. So that's when mm. when I decided, you know, this is what I have to do. And I've been lucky ever since. But it's been a grind for 20, 20 some years. And you know, mm. it's only now that it's it's like really paying off and I'm really, really having fun, you know, and I'm passionate, okay. super okay. passionate. So I, I have a question for you then, like, you're, you're on the show mm -hmm. and it's, it's unabashedly Filipino. Yes, yes, right? yes. How does that feel? Oh, Travis, I'm telling you right now. Get at me, Jojo. A dream come true. Yes, it does. Being Filipino, <laughs> um, not a lot of people, you know, Knew, really know about the culture, mm -hmm. especially here. I mean, mm -hmm. in other countries, it, it's like it, it's not like a strong demographic. It is a strong demographic population wise, but not a lot of people are accustomed to the culture. And so I, you know, I was always, you know, big on trying to impress upon people around me, you know, my culture. And that's why I started that uh, uh, Bolo Sportswear to promote that. And we promoted it big time. We went to uh, Filipino cultural nights across the, the whole country and uh, along with my cousin, Bob Aguilar. Um, and, you know, it felt good to kind of like show people uh, the Filipino culture that it's, it's so different from other like Latin or Japanese or Chinese, but, um, and, and it's got its, its individual like distinctive, like, uh, you know, just feels and uh i wanted to uh, express that and now it's come full circle to where i chose what i want to do and i got to do it at a time when you know you know everything came together and like netflix uh gave us this huge opportunity and i also you know attached myself to one of the best animation people in the business which is jay oliva and he's Filipino also. And, you know, we, it, it just all came together at this one time and it was so, so fortuitous. And it, it feels so great to, you know, just finally, you know, come back to that place where, you know, I, I want to, I'm successfully doing something in a, in a wider, um, you know, I can reach a wider audience uh, promoting the Filipino culture. So yes, it's wonderful. It's really I can I, yeah, I can I, I can only imagine. I mean, like I said, I mean I I've it, it's it was almost like just being immersed, right? And and so it it just felt uh, you know it, it it just felt different. You know, it it it, it did. And I, I can tell you, you know, as 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 someone who you know, has, you know, quite a few actually Filipino friends, you know, I've, I've just never been at steep then in, in, in it, you know, as, as a matter of fact, like my perception of Filipino culture was they must be the coolest Asians ever because I've never seen like, you know, uh, you know, Asian, uh, you know, Asian sort of, you know, ethnicity that, that, that is so, that is so down. I mean, I, you know, like every time I used to watch like a dance show and Filipinos got on that, <laughs> I might as well just give it to them. You know, because 
you know, Filipinos are real tough. I mean, every six months you hear about some disaster and they're still there. So, you know, they got to be the toughest guys, you know, around. So mm. I, I'm, I'm just enjoying the ride. I really am. I, I mean, I can't wait for the next season. I really can't. I only had one Thank flaw you. with the show. I had one flaw with the show, and it was like <laughs> Netflix should have gave them more money to give me more episodes. Yeah, I know. It was only six. I, I was, more. you know, it's funny, but, I was, right? Was because like, I was going, yeah, me too. I was on episode six, and I'm like, wait, that's it? That's, yeah. That's I need at least they, 10. I need at least That's just 10. what they do now. Every time I, mean, I know, but I was like, eight, but isn't it eight, though, Leon, now? No, like, six, wait, what's going six. on? Yeah, it's six. Transformers got six too. And I was like, they should have gave this ten. Castlevania got six. Yeah, they should have gave this just ten. What they do. I mean, yes. just, and Tressa will cut you. She will cut you. Yeah. The, the one comment I wanted to make, which was that you know, it's funny. There's traditionally been so much um, upward pressure against doing you know things that are you know shows that are that are relevant to a particular culture because there's always been this well it's not going to resonate with our audiences out there and and what we're finding is that it does resonate right like i am not deep at all in in filipino culture and i'm just watching this like this is amazing you know like that is a really creepy baby with legs coming out of his back <laughs> you know but, but people who are embracing this culture are like oh no 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 we know that from folklore right like i've been told this story when i was a kid mm -hmm. so for people who have that background and that history it resonates on a deeper level which is fine but it was still accessible and that and that's to the success of what you guys did it was still successful. I didn't have to have that encyclopedia. In fact, now I kind of want to know more, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. let me let me go and, and go on Wikipedia and, and pull out my phone and, and learn some more about this stuff. So, so that's where you guys executed really well. And that's really hard to do to, to serve multiple audiences uh, as, as seamlessly and effectively as you did. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leon. And you know, if you want to learn more, get the comic book. And we closely tried, or we tried our best to, you know, do a uh, just uh, adaption that's that's okay, but I'm telling you right now the the comic book is deep and, and even more like mm. you get engulfed in that culture. Mm. I have a question. When you read the comic book, were you like, mm. "Yeah, I'm going to work on this project"? Is that when did you realize this is the project I really want to work on? You know, the comic book wasn't really uh, widely spread in here in, in the states and. Uh, I didn't even know about it until, you know, uh, Jay, you know, told us we can do an animated project. And then, you know, I engulfed myself in the, the comic book. But um, yeah, it, I didn't know, know about it before. But now, I mean, after hearing about it, I was like, oh, my God, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a huge, huge deal for me. Mm -hmm. A question like, you know, in this in this age where you know, we're we're really trying to you know stop all this you know Asian you know hate, Asian hate and, yeah and, and and whatnot. Do you think this was like a ray of light? Like, you know, honestly, like here's something to celebrate in the midst of all this bullshit. Really? Oh yeah, I don't know, Travis. It, that, it, it I just feel like bad that that's happening, but um, it's also I think you know, we're coming out of it because of the pandemic. I think people were just so frustrated, you know, had to take it out on some people. And yes, it's like, you know, Tressie came at a good time where, you know, people are just coming out of this and it's like, hey, let's, let's, you know, start to like each other again. Right? Yes. 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 But I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, that was, that was serious. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's serious. look, I mean, I, what I don't understand is, you know, like some of the occurrences I see where black people take part, in this, uh, you know, because I, you know, because I'm like, dude, like you don't even have to go into history books to see that, you know, <laughs> you get this, we get this sort of treatment, like, you know, how, how, you know, I don't understand how black people could be a part of this. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that, that was the part that was, that was confusing me as so I'm so like, we're in the same boat. Like, yeah, you know. it's, it's totally disheartening. It is totally disheartening when black people join in on this because we're because this is, we're not a monolith, and so we have to speak up against it. Like now, you're making me work against us, mm -hmm. and I'm shamed at the same time as yeah. I'm doing the work. Yeah, it's, right. it's it's important for all marginalized communities mm -hmm. to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we are, are more our, uh, yes, we have differences, but we are more our allies uh, than, than anything else. Discrimination against one group can easily be expressed against another. Uh, and, and I do agree with you, Travis, it is disheartening to see people take that perspective, but I've also seen a lot of people stand up and say, you know, nah, right? Like, this doesn't work, right? So, um, but, but I think it's important for us to highlight that and to highlight that publicly that it's, it's, it's unacceptable, right? It's, I, don't, yeah. I don't care what you look like. It's, it's unacceptable. And I got your back just like anyone else's. <gasps> yeah. Hey, I Ryan. Back. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Hold on, Ryan, Ryan's speaking. Ryan, we can't hear you. You're muted. My bad. Uh, so I, was, I don't know about you guys, but I've been putting a lot of work in on my end because I was first married to a Filipino and now I'm married to a Korean. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So, so his so his Asian American hates a little different. It's usually because of something he did. Yes. You know so, so and, and, the, and the Asian hate is actually to him. It's not that you know. <laughs> so so Ryan, uh, uh, you're an art director. And yep. Jojo's my director, mm. and he does animation. Mm. I want to know the differences and similarities between both fields because we have a video game art director and we have an animation art director. Yeah, like well, the pipeline differences. That's just the that's the, that's the production nerd in me. Yeah. Well, I, I've worked in animation before, but not as a as a director. I was a storyboard artist on uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man for a while, for a couple of years. Um, I've done stuff for. Um, Man of Steel and, um, uh, you know, Justice League and all that stuff. So I've, I've done like other, but so small stuff is basically small, 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 small stuff. Small stuff. So, um, <laughs> Jojo's done all the stuff, I think. He <laughs> <laughs> clean up all the way through, apparently. Yeah. 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 But, 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 yeah. So, so most of my uh, directing would come from um, um, small projects that, 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 that was around me, you know, so, and it, they range from, from comics to short animations to, you know, um, even, even motion comics, you know, so, okay. so stuff like that, um, that, that I've worked on. Um, so it's, I, I'm, I, I'm assuming, you know, uh, when you go to like live action or just oh, like free? all animation, oh, I froze. Oh, there's come there's, back, come there's back, a lot of similarities because there's there, to me it's like we're, we're cousins you know kind of speaking the same language you know we're the same family you know but we're just over here over there you know a little bit you know that's what it feel it feels like to me but one day Jojo, are you racing against the clock no well I, well what what i mean is is it's like you know a, a lot of times in, in in games where you know we have to make these compromises or whatever you know it's it's like hey we've got six months worth of work to do in like two and a half months or, or, or something like that right like what's your what's your biggest challenge um when you're um when, when you're when you're on these shows like uh at, at this point is it is it the time that you're up against you know oh. what 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 yeah like like you know Travis, when you said, are you racing against the clock? I, mean, I thought you said- I ain't got to go nowhere. <laughs> yes, in animation. Oh yeah, we have, oh, we have these crazy tight schedules and yeah, it's it's messed up. And sometimes we just don't have the chance to, like we try our best to plan things out the best we can, but, but then things just get like backed up with revisions and stuff like that, trying to make it the best we can. And so things get left out. Like we would have loved to do more with Tresse, but you know, the budget restraints, you know, and because of the, you know, we are racing against time because there are budget restraints, you know, sure. and we don't have enough money to pay everyone like mm -hmm. after a certain point. And uh, um, yeah, it, it, it's crazy tough, but like I said before, when it's something you love, it becomes like a passion Amen. when it's something it's, you know, that it's, it, it becomes a grind when it's not something you love, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, so Jojo, to that point, can I, can I ask you a question? Like what, what was the hill you were willing to die on? Right? Like that yeah. Gandalf, yep. this shall not pass, <laughs> that you were, you were unwilling to, to let it go. <laughs> Leon, this is so crazy. You asked that lots of people have that. I really had that hill. Um, when I was on a show, one of the producers ha had 
a, a, a production assistant watching us while we draw because we were under time restraints. I was so under pressure, I got hives on my body. So I left animation for a while and moved up to the mountains under, I had no money. I just wanted to leave. Mm. I had no money. I lived under the poverty level. I fished for my food up in Mammoth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, but, you know, when I totally said to myself, I can't be a mountain man. I'm not, you know, I'm not. <laughs> You're not built that way. Um, yeah, that's not me. I, uh, I came back and got on a different project. So it's project to project. Some are great. Some are really bad, so that's a good question. Okay. Yeah. Here's 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 a here's a question for you. So, um, so you're actually tasked with taking a lot of, you know, sort of this folklore, right, mm -hmm. and, and and giving it form and function and mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. Like, what are the steps that you took to like take these characters or these or, or these different sort of mythological creatures and and you know, give them shape or, or, or function? Like, what was that process like? Well, oh, the for Tresse, the producers and Netflix, the producers in Indonesia at base, um, they, mm -hmm. they paid for us to fly out to Manila and then tour all the locations that they were thinking about, you know, covering the writers and wow. the producers in the Philippines. And so we toured there, me and Jay Oliva, and you know, we, we tried to immerse ourselves and do our best to take as many photos. And I did live there for a while, but, you know, um, I, uh, you know, I only had like this one route from home to college. You know? <laughs> so I didn't get to see everything, you know. Uh, but the thing is, uh, when I lived in the Philippines, I, I was stuck in traffic so much that you just sit there and look and at things. And so, yeah, that's how I absorb things. And then when Jay and I went to the Philippines, we just really, you know, worked hard to make sure that, you know, oh, this this can fit here, this can fit there in, in the story. So, um, and then, you know, it's not just me and Jay, you know, the team that we assembled, you know, all engulfed themselves in the culture and the pictures and all that stuff. So I really handed to them he they adopted the ways you know they had like they really immersed themselves so yeah the so, team is amazing i just i did nuno like he, he just reminds me of like oscar the grouch right like i i want him to still be alive I, <laughs> well, well in the philippines they, he, they might actually exist you know so <laughs> how about that nice what one of the one of the things that amazes me about that right is it is that you can sit in this environment and and look at images and books and sculpture and that gives you that visual piece but in animation how things move and how things sound are are equally important so you know mm -hmm. what was your process in, in getting that right right like you can't you know, look that up. There's usually no reference material on 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 what these things sound like. You oh know? yeah, this is a half horse, half man. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. You know, you know, like come on, like yeah, how'd that work? Well, you know, I I know Ryan. He's he's used to world building and stuff like that. It, it's a lot of pressure because there there's a whole culture looking at it. So you have to rely on others, like Tanya, the, the producer at base. She you know, was there for us anytime we had a question. And then, you know, Jay and I would always reach out to family members. My parents are in the Philippines. So I'm like saying, mm. what would they do with this, you know, in the Philippines? How would they say this? How would they dress for this? And, and it, so it's, all, it's just a lot of research and, you know, just kind of like being passionate about it. Yeah. So how's that love? How's how's that how's that how's that love feel? Because dude, I know you got it, dude. I know you got it. Like, I, you know, I can I I can I, I I know Filipino people just came up to you and were like, "Yo, JoJo, for real though, dog." Like, yeah, how's that feel? But I, I'm not gonna ask, "Did you get it?" I want to know how it felt <laughs> when you got it because I know you got it, Travis. It feels really great because it's like, oh, all this hard work. You know, this is where you know, you were, you've been working for to get, yeah, and it, it, it does pay off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just keep on, keep on, 
doing what you love and you know <laughs> it, that I, I want to tell you it's a great thing that love thank you no i was gonna say real quick because we only have a couple, couple minutes left i really want to get this in here i want to get your approach on character designs mm -hmm. um um you know we, we can talk about worlds but really let's let's just focus on on character, character. you actually you know dabble a little bit because you actually went to you went to the Philippines and you did some research, some on the ground research to find out what, what does this look like and that. Yeah. What about characters? Characters. Give me, give, okay. me, give me that. Okay. I only designed a couple monsters and a couple of characters on Tresse. I think our main character designer was Will Nichols, who's who's half Caucasian, half white. I mean, half Caucasian, half Korean, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, you know, I have to hand it to him. He really, really, you know, just kind of researched Filipinos. He was copying us. He was copying all the Filipino pictures we gave him. And yeah, I have to give a lot of credit to Will. But as far as characters, yes, there's a lot of nuances about Filipinos that you want to hit because otherwise they could just be Japanese or Chinese right. Right. or Mexican. So there, there are a lot of nuances that uh, yeah. have to be hit. Yeah, I was looking at Datu, the God of War, and I was like, wow, this may be the best looking God of War I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. He looked like a badass. When he first <laughs> up was on the screen, when he rips up in the head. A yeah. kind of I know. Like, he, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> that dude is going to kick everybody's ass. <laughs> we kind of researched uh, Lapu Lapu, who's a, a warrior in the Philippines, mm -hmm. who actually like cut off the head of Magellan. So. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So did you get to assemble the team that you desired? Like as our director, you're like, these are the people yes. I want to work with. Okay. Yeah. What was the criteria for you to assemble that team? Okay. First off, mm -hmm. no assholes. I don't care <laughs> how good you are. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you just can't be an asshole. We got to work closely together. Mm -hmm. And second, you know, it's just the best people that I've worked with ever, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then, you know, as far as veterans go, you have to have a, a, some veterans, but then the young people, you know, the young people bring an energy and like, it's a chance for the young people to learn from the older people and the older people to learn from the younger people. So mm -hmm. that was a, a great opportunity for mm. me to assemble a group like that. And uh, yeah, for tr and, and that's what I've done for the, the latest shows I'm, I'm working on now, nice. which are a lot of video game people you know, because it's uh, the two shows are 3D animation and mm -hmm. like the video game people know how to build or how to design for, you know, 3D. And it's it's really great that way. Nice, nice, nice. Are you excited if Tressa gets a second season? Oh, yes. I'm hoping and praying. Yeah, because okay. there's a lot of story yet to be told. Mm. And, you know, Bajet Tan and uh, Kaju Baldissimo made a, a a world in those in the comics that you know i i still think we can you know explore let, let, information let me correct myself if it gets a second season when it gets, when it a, gets second a second season hopefully season. hopefully oh yeah it it, it, it it trended in the top 10 in 19 countries yeah i don't think there's many anything of netflix has released besides one of their tent poles that have done that mm-hmm you know, it's, so it's, that's it's funny. amazing. Congratulations to Thank that. You. 19 yeah. countries. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it 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 you know, it's it's funny because when I first started watching the episodes, it, it, it sort of reminded me of Elric. Like, uh -huh. you know, um, because I was like, here's someone who's steeped in in in, in the mystic arts and her uh, you know her parents uh were were supernatural and had all these deals with all these supernatural beings and all this other kinds of stuff you know and so i was like wow this looks like a modern day elric you know and i thought that was really really cool wow that's so I, that's awesome. that's why i was in a, you know that 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 first episode i was just like yo man this is this is everything so i mean i i, I just appreciated it because it was just close to a lot of the things that I did in World of Darkness uh, back in the '90s, and, and mm. so and so to see it sort of living and breathing, and 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 you know, and having a a, a new voice was yeah. was was just was was spectacular. I mean, like from the first episode, I was like, "Yeah, I'm in." I'm well, so in. thank you. That yeah. praise from you know a, 
a group of professionals like you is like very, it, it's, it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. And, and look, and, and if it wasn't good, I'd tell you, trust me, I, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, ha I have a problem keeping, uh, you know, That's keeping so my mouth cool. shut when it, I don't like stuff. But when <laughs> I love stuff, I got to tell people, I got to tell people because I know, I know how, how long you work on something and, 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 and when, you know, you put it out there and you try to, you know, and, and you hope everyone digs it and you hope people understand. Yes. And, 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 and what I liked is it didn't feel like a big info dump at the beginning. It was just like, look, just go on this ride, trust us. Right. Mm -hmm. By, by, by the time you get to, you know, this, to the, to the end, you'll understand, right. Just, 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 just sit back, relax and enjoy this and, and enjoy this ride as creepy as it is, as violent as it is, as interesting as it is, mm -hmm. just, just trust us. And that, and, and, and so it just paid off every episode. I was just like, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask all the questions. I'm going to see whether or not they answer them. And, and I think, you know, the, the way that you guys answered the questions to me was just awesome yeah thank you travis that's really yeah. eloquent and nicely said thank you thank you oh yeah and by the way it's creepiness you know we can lend a lot of its creepiness to dave hartman who was a he's actually the live action director of phantasm five he was on our team he was a you know that makes sense to <laughs> yeah, the baby makes sense now. now yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, with uh, as I know we're closing our show, uh, Jojo. I want to give you space to actually announce all the things you're working on, where people can reach you, and if in, if any of our fans have questions for you, they can come to your social media and just congratulate you. You know, because it, it's thanks, a beautiful Chuck. piece. It's really beautiful. Oh, thanks, Chuck. And honestly, th it's it's very it's, it's a big honor to be interviewed by you guys. It, it's, you know, because you guys are professionals, you really know what it, I, I feel like you really understand, you know, and I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, right now I'm working on um, Twilight of the Gods. It's a mm -hmm. North project with Zack mm -hmm. Snyder. Okay. Uh, I'm art directing that. And nice. then I'm almost in post on Army of the Dead, Lost Vegas, and I'm production designer on that with Zack Snyder and Jay Oliva. Okay. Both are with Zack Snyder and Jay Oliva. So okay. that, that's a huge deal for me. And um, Lex and Otis right now is doing great. We've also got another show uh, that we're working on right now um, called um, Taken Off the Video Game Arc Survival and the animation, 2D animation is looking great on that. And I'm production mm. designer on that one too. So, yeah, there's a lot going on right now. I see. And I'm yeah. very happy. And you can reach me, or I, if you go on Twitter, which I just joined this year, I'm Jojo Aguilar 33. Jojo Aguilar 33. There it is. Thank so you, guys. Everybody that's an audience, crowd listening to this, remember to go on Jojo Aguilar 33 and oh. congratulate Jojo for all the hard work and bringing a new culture to a lot of us in America. Wow, you guys are great. I love you guys. Thank Watch you. it. Thank you. Watch it. Jojo, it's been and a, promote this channel. I love it. It's thank been you, an honor, you. my friend. Jojo, you can come back here anytime. Yeah. You can just pick a show. Yeah. We have a show called Pasta Pan Geek where you can hang on with hang along with Errol, who's a voice actor in oh, USA, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Arnold. And they cook. They cook. Oh my God. Oh. They cook Filipino food. <laughs> so <laughs> when you go, I'm gonna show up to just to congratulate you and eat with you. I still have a lot of questions. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank really you. Nice Much love, Jojo. Thank you, Thank you Jojo. Time. Thank you. Um, with that, I'm going to close the show. Anybody have anything else to say before I close? I think Jojo said it all. Man. I think he and, did. You know, and, and once again, happy Juneteenth, everybody. Yes. You more, know. more. Also, happy Father's Day. Happy, happy, Father's, Father's, yes. uh, mm -hmm. uh, happy Father's Day to a lot of our gaming dads. Uh, I'll just say briefly, last night, uh, I had a squad of uh, five gaming dads and my son uh, finished the Vault of Glass in Destiny 2 yesterday. So just being oh. able to do that with my son was was, uh, was a really cool experience. <laughs> One of the only things I wanted for Father's Day was to do that. I didn't get invited, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I put it out there. Because I'm really not as good as your son. And, and <laughs> like, uh, you know, so I wasn't going to yep. be that's because my son's guardian would have been carrying yours. 
<laughs> With that, Jojo, you play video games? Do you do you have time for video games? Oh, you know what? I haven't played in a while because I'm actually I get too engulfed and I get mm -hmm. PTSD. Oh, I'm the so, same way as him, man. We're the same thing. <laughs> you know, y'all, y'all may be brothers separated. Oh, we'll get a place. Yeah, we'll get a Industry, later. man. In, industry forces us to get get into this little, you know, yeah. mental shell. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, with that said, I'm going to close the show, you all. I'm going to shout out to Digital Click for all the creative they always deliver us. If you all love this overlay, which is gorgeous, this Tres A uh, Technumian overlay is gorgeous, um, get your art done from Digital Click. I want to super thank JoJo for coming on the show and giving us uh, his time to actually talk yeah, about JoJo you. Aguilar, uh, giving us his time to talk about Tres A. Thanks, guys. Um, please follow us here on Twitch. Follow JoJo on Twitter. He's new there, so follow him. He probably has a, his Twitter probably blew up by now. And that's JoJo Aguilar 33. And with that said, I'm going to close it out. We have a Pod Squadron tonight, and we have Nerdtastic tomorrow. See y'all next week. Yep. Peace. Mm -hmm.